The man was getting ready to go to work, but the zombie disagreed. Seeing this, Alice quickly grabbed her daughter and tried to escape, only to find more zombies blocking their path. Alice could only take her daughter into the laundry room, blocking the door tightly with a cabinet. Then, she smashed through the ceiling with a mop and managed to crawl into the attic just before the zombies broke through the door. While the zombies were not paying attention, they quietly escaped to the outside from the other side. However, to their surprise, the streets were even more dangerous. Bloodthirsty zombies were everywhere, and everyone was desperately fleeing. When Alice didn't know what to do, a car suddenly screeched to a stop in front of them and a woman inside started cursing at Alice, but looking at the horde of zombies swarming behind them, the woman still tells them to get in the car and drive away. However, the car collided with a truck not far away. Fortunately, they were unharmed. As Alice kicked open the car door and crawled out, they realized that a large group of zombies had caught up. With no time to save the woman, Alice hurriedly took her daughter and ran into a nearby house. When they reached the second floor, the zombies broke through the door, and they had to hide in a closet. Soon, a zombie entered the room, and they dared not make a sound. However, the zombie kept wandering around the room and showed no signs of leaving. It was only a matter of time before they would be discovered. In order to protect her daughter, Alice decided to lure the zombie away by rushing out of the closet. But just as she reached the doorway, a zombie caught her and Alice fought desperately, accidentally killing the zombie. Alice turned her head and spotted her zombie husband again, who opened his cherry mouth and sent Alice straight away. But soon Alice opens her eyes again and realizes that she is inside the base of the Umbrella Corporation. It turned out that everything that had just happened was a biochemical experiment using Alice's clone. Not only Alice, but everyone who appeared earlier were also clones. And the real Alice is here because they were attacked by the Umbrella Corporation just a few days ago when they saved a boatload of survivors. The powerful and heartless Umbrella Corporation launched a massacre against the defenseless survivors. The leader was Jill, Alice's former teammate, from the spider-like machine on her chest. It was evident that she was controlled by Umbrella Corporation, the survivors were outnumbered, and the ship was quickly overrun. Even Alice was blown into the sea by the crashed helicopter. When Alice woke up again, she found herself captured by Umbrella Corporation. Jill appears at a window and questions Alice about why she betrayed Umbrella Corporation, but Alice only wanted to know about Chris and Claire's safety, which resulted in punishment from Jill, who wanted to subdue Alice in this way. However, not long after, the base's supercomputer was invaded from the outside, causing the security system to shut down forcibly and take several minutes to restart. The room where Alice was held was opened, and a drawer with a combat suit popped out from the wall. Though feeling confused, Alice knew it was a perfect opportunity to escape, so she put on the suit and walked out of the room, but the security system quickly restarted. Red grids of lasers appeared in the corridor, rapidly closing in on Alice. As Alice escaped the corridor, she suddenly found herself in the pre-apocalyptic streets of Tokyo. Alice, feeling bad, grabbed a chain and smashed through the police car, from which he managed to get a pistol. At that moment, the supercomputer, Red Queen, issued a command. Stand by. Tokyo sequence initialized. As the rain poured down, the once silent streets filled with people. A familiar face appeared the first infected person in Japan. The man looked at the woman again, and history repeated itself. The scene marked the beginning of Tokyo's fall. Red Queen used one-to-one -one simulation and countless clones to recreate the scenario. As the pedestrians on the street were infected one by one, the gate of the nearby base suddenly opened. Zombies swarmed towards Alice, and she hurriedly ran inside the base. But the zombie horde quickly caught up. She could only face them head on, using the iron chain and handgun in her hands to effortlessly take down dozens of zombies. However, as she turned around, more zombies were coming. The door behind her opened suddenly, and Alice decisively rushed in. It was the central control center of the Umbrella Corporation base. The guards had all been taken out, and a weapon console next to them slowly ascended. Just as Alice was about to replenish her equipment, a woman suddenly aimed her gun at Alice's waist. She is Ada Wong, and the two go to war as soon as they meet. However, Alice proved to be the more skilled fighter in the end. Alice knows that Ada Wong is an executive with the Umbrella Corporation and an agent under Albert, but what is the purpose of showing up here? At that moment, Albert's projection appeared, and he explained everything to Alice. 
It was Albert who commanded Ada Wong to kill everyone in the control center and shut down the base's security system to rescue Alice. The current Umbrella Corporation had broken away from Albert's control and was now under the dominion of the supercomputer. Red Queen Red Queen aimed to eradicate all humanity and become the ruler of the world. Albert needed Alice's formidable combat skills to join forces against Red Queen. They were currently in an abandoned military base under a glacier in the former Soviet Union, which had been expanded and transformed by Umbrella Corporation into a large-scale bioweapon testing facility. The place Alice had just passed through was the Tokyo test site. And there were countless other locations, such as Moscow and New York. Escaping from there wouldn't be easy. Therefore, Albert arranged a ground assault team to infiltrate the base through the submarine area, then pass through the Moscow test area. Alice, on the other hand, needed to go through the New York test area to meet up with the team in the suburbs and finally escape through the submarine area using an elevator. After briefing them, Red Queen once again seized control of the system, and Albert was forcibly disconnected. From now on, they were on their own. Meanwhile, the assault team also arrived at the top of the base and successfully controlled the elevator through the actions of a technician. After installing timed bombs in the ventilation shaft, the team took the elevator to the base's interior, where Alice's former teammate Luther was among them. Red Queen detected the intrusion and set an ambush at the elevator. As soon as the elevator descended, a spinning disc of a machine gun flew out and instantly eliminated three guards. The team successfully arrived inside the base. They hurriedly made their way to the Moscow test area. At the same time, Alice arrived at the New York test area. To prevent Alice and Ada Wong from advancing further, Red Queen immediately activated bioweapons. Just as they sensed the danger, the executioner wielding a massive axe appeared before them. Dealing with one executioner was difficult enough. But this time, there were two of them. Alice and Ada Wong quickly stood back to back and entered combat mode. In the next second, both executioners launched their attacks. Bullets hitting the executioner's body are like a massage for the executioner. Ada Wong was forced into a bus, and the executioner continuously swung its axe, severely damaging the bus. Ada Wong could only keep evading in the opposite direction. The other executioner threw its axe at Alice. She leaned forward to dodge, and the axe hit an adjacent oil tanker. Seeing Ada Wong in danger, Alice decisively opened fire to distract the executioner's attention. The other executioner also removed its axe. Facing two executioners, Alice could only frantically flee, and just as they were about to catch up to her, she leaped and narrowly evaded a deadly blow. The executioner's axe got stuck, and the leaking gasoline from the nearby tanker flowed under their feet. Alice and Ada Wong shot at the gas tank together. Successfully resolving the immediate threat, after dealing with the executioners, Alice and Ada Wong continued towards their destination. Meanwhile, the assault team had just arrived at the Moscow test area and was also under attack by a group of bioweapons troops. They were armed with powerful weapons, even including heavy ones like rocket launchers. The team hid in the shopping mall and fought back, but there were too many opponents, and eventually the mall was overrun and one of their teammates was killed. Finally, the technician found an escape route. At this time, Alice and Ada Wong had already reached the suburbs of New York which was the location where the bio-experiment in the movie had begun. But they didn't see any sign of the assault team. Alice heard movement in a nearby room and walked in. On the first floor, they found the deceased Alice clone and killed a zombie on the second floor. They also found Becky hiding in a closet. Becky mistook this Alice for her mother and immediately embraced her. Despite knowing Becky was a clone, Alice decided to take her along. But as they stepped outside, they were intercepted by a clone team led by Jill with some familiar faces like Carlos and the security personnel from the first movie, The Hive. Alice pretended to surrender, while Ada Wong instantly opened fire from behind. Alice they quickly took cover inside a house, but the enemy's firepower was too fierce, riddling the entire house with holes. Ada Wong knows that this is not the way to go, so she hands Alice a pair of navigation glasses and decides to stay in cover for her to go first. As soon as Alice left, Rain fired a grenade into the house. Ada Wong quickly sprayed the floor with bullets and managed to hide before the explosion. Meanwhile, Alice, along with Becky, rushed towards the Moscow test area, where they encountered another clone of Rain. This clone had saved Becky before, so Alice decided to leave Becky with her to hide while she continued to find the assault team. The assault team had finally found an escape route, but as soon as they stepped out, a 40-meter-long tongue grabbed of the technicians. It was a giant liquor, 
They opened fire, but their bullets had no effect on the liquor. In a critical moment, Alice drove a car and rammed the liquor, saving the team. However, before Alice and Luther could catch up on old times, a horde of weapon-wielding zombie began chasing them, and the giant liquor was close behind, to shake them off. Alice drove the car into a subway station, but the liquor persisted. Alice decisively crashes through a steel frame under construction, using the falling concrete and the frame to successfully stop the liquors from pursuing him. After finding Becky in the Clone of Rain, Alice used the navigation goggles Ada Wong had given her to find a shortcut to the submarine area. What they didn't realize was that the liquors buried under the rubble were on the move again. Soon they reach the submarine area, but as soon as they get on the lift, the liquors strike again, taking Becky and killing the clone. <laughs> Determined to save Becky, Alice ignored Leon's objections and pursued the liquor. When Alice caught up, she found Becky trapped by the liquor. Alice didn't hesitate and shot her grappling gun to fly up to rescue Becky. After rescuing Becky, Alice and Becky went to the cloning area, but they didn't expect the undefeatable liquors to chase after them again. Alice took out a bomb and threw it on the ground and used the rope gun to escape. And at the same time, she successfully killed liquors. At the same time, Leon and the others engaged in a fierce battle with Jill's clone team led by Jill. In order to cover the escape of the two a teammate decided to stay behind to cover, and was ultimately outnumbered and killed by random gunfire, also killing a man before he died. At that moment Leon looks at the time and realizes that the time bomb installed is about to explode. The huge explosion causes the base to collapse and the sea rushes into the base. Leon and Luther managed to escape on the elevator and picked up Alice and Becky halfway. They rode on a snowmobile to leave, but the ice suddenly cracked, and a submarine emerged, causing the snowmobile to overturn. Jill, who had escaped earlier, intercepted their path with the captured Ada Wong. They thought they had an absolute advantage with three against two, but to their surprise, Rain immediately took out a parasite and injected it into her body and then knocked out Ada Wong. The fight is on. Alice and Jill go head to head. Luther and Leon kept shooting at Rain, but they didn't expect the parasite to be so terrifying. Not only did the bullet fail to harm Rain, it exited her body through her fingers. Alice is also at a disadvantage against Jill, who is under control. Jill pursued the attack. Alice was unable to fight. The last blow directly on the head, and then grabbed the dying Alice ready to kill. At the critical moment Alice ripped off a robot spider from Jill's chest, and Jill, who had lost Red Queen's control, instantly fell to the ground and convulsed. Meanwhile, Leon and Luther engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Rain. With the parasite's power, Rain's blood is so thick and his defense is so high that Leon and Luther's punches can't do any damage to Rain. Even the fire extinguisher can't move when it hits Rain's face, and Rain breaks their bones with every attack. Luther's heart stopped when he took Rain's punch head on. Leon was kicked away by Rain. Seeing that both Luther and Leon were knocked down, Alice immediately raised her submachine gun and opened fire. However, Rain charged forward, and a palm strike almost killed Alice on the spot. Alice fell and noticed zombies beneath the ice. She came up with an idea. Meanwhile, Jill, who regained her memories, threw her weapon over to Alice. Alice caught the submachine gun and relentlessly shot at the ice beneath Rain's feet catching Rain off guard, and causing it to fall into the ice pit, where countless zombies below devoured it. After the battle, Ada Wong, who had been unconscious, finally woke up. A rescue helicopter sent by Albert also arrived. The group flew to a base inside the White House, where Alice saw Albert and was injected with the T-virus by him again. Albert restored Alice's superpowers and explained the impending crisis they were facing. The base was humanity's last fortress, and Red Queen's zombie army was closing in. Inside, there were not only ferocious liquors, but also zombie birds that could fly. This would be the final battle that would decide the fate of humanity. 